to be the last speaker on a day like this at the end of a marvelous conference is not necessarily an enviable position. <laughs> but I can promise you that as the mother of Paul Campbell, who is the timekeeper, it is now my turn, Paul, to obey what you tell me to do. And that is to be short, and to be provocative, and to tell the truth. It is Sunday morning, and I am a preacher. And so, like it or not, you are, for the next 15 minutes, my congregation. I want to do something a bit provocative. We have talked about knowing and knowledge for several days and many hours now. And so I simply want to help us think about knowing, not just the relationship of faith and knowing, but knowing itself. Maybe one way to start this is for me to share with you a disturbing quotation one that I have pondered over ever since I first heard it. It is a quotation from Arthur Miller, and I think it begins to ask some questions about knowing. And so in the next few minutes, perhaps we will spend a little bit of time thinking about this important subject. The quotation is from his play, After the Fall. Probably many of you know this play, and certainly you know Arthur Miller, one of the great writers, one of the great playwriters of our time. And it goes like this. I awake each morning like a boy. Even now, even now I swear to you, there's something in me that could dare to love the world again. Is the knowing all? Is the knowing all to know and even happily that we meet unblessed, not in some garden of wax and fruit and painted trees, the lie of Eden, but after, after, after the fall, after many, many deaths, is the knowing all and the wish to kill is never killed. But when some gift of courage, one may look into its face, and when it appears, and with a stroke of love, as to an idiot in the house, forgive it again and again and again forever. The question that he raises, of course, is the knowing all, the nature and meaning of knowing, not just how we know, but what we know, and what is, in fact, the meaning of knowing, and what is its relationship or faith, of, or faith to knowing. To know is not always to act, but to know is to ponder and to wonder but finally, knowing, I believe, is to act. I only know one way to think about this, and it is, in fact, a preacher way. Don't worry, you don't have a sermon coming. <laughs> but it is a preacher way to finally say, the best way I know to say to you what I want to say in this closing speech in this long time together of many, many speeches, is to tell you a story. I was privileged to have my life changed by Martin Luther King. Not only my life, but the life of my whole family. We as a family encountered Dr. King when he came to our congregation, and it was a difficult, and life-changing moment. I, of course, who thought everyone would be thrilled to have him there, but it was not the case. 
And so we have lived as a family through the times of Dr. King and through all of what that meant, that though it made some of the nights dark, difficult, and life-changing, it was, in fact, one of the great blessings. The story I want to tell you is about a man from South Africa, and I'd be very curious if any of you have heard the name Bayers Nade. I'd love to see your hands if you know it. Thank you, a partner right up here. It is a very little known name, and yet South Africa would not be a free nation today was it not for Martin, it was it not for Bayers Nade. So just for these few moments, walk with me through some moments in Bayers Nade's life that I think helps all of us to understand the answer to the question, is the knowing all? Bayers Nade was a white minister. He was very much a part of the Bruder Bond, which was the white power structure of South Africa that kept it the white South Africa that it was. He was in one of the largest and the most prestigious churches in South Africa. It would have been an enviable congregation in the days of apartheid. Bayers Nade was a good man, an aware man. It was entirely possible that because as a member of the Bruder Bond, he would in fact someday be the president of white South Africa. He had black servants, as most of the white people of many of them, whether they had great wealth or not, but most of the preachers would have had black servants. They were not allowed to come into the dining room when the family was eating. And so one day, Bayers and his family were having lunch, and the black servant came running into the room, and he said, Dr. Nade, Dr. Nade, you have got to help me. And Bayers was taken aback, Bayers being a kind man with a good heart. And he said, this young man is not going to come in here unless there's something wrong. He said, Dr. Nade, my wife is having a baby, and I just got word that she's dying and the baby may not make it either, and I live many miles from here. And I know it's not proper for me to be here, but could you take me, please take me? And of course, Bayer said, yes, of course, having no idea what it would mean to the rest of his life. He gets in the car and he drives him to Crossroads, the place where all the blacks were living. He had never been there before. He had never known where his servants lived. They went to the place where the baby was being born. The mother died, and the baby lived. And Bayers Nade was never again to be the same man. He came home, and he realized that what he knew about his country was devoid of truth and passion and love and forgiveness. And this servant had given to his knowing what it needed, truth, honesty, a recognition of what was happening in his very own country. In that moment, his whole life changed. He told his congregation what had happened. They dismissed him. The final day that he was there to preach in the congregation, and if there's any Baptists in the room, they'll know exactly what this means. They hung his robe, which they made him remove, and they hung it backwards on the pulpit chair, which they did only for ministers who had died. He was walked out of his congregation and asked never to come back. He stood with his wife and his children and he began a life under house arrest. He lived under house arrest for 25 years. I was privileged to know Bayers, and I remember going to see him and having him tell me the story. And the only place he could tell it to me was in his garden, 
because he had already figured out that there were places in the garden where no matter that they recorded everything in his house, they couldn't record anything there. And I came to know Bears. He was for me a teacher. He was for me a life-changing human being. And one day they came to him, the people of the community, and they said, we want you to take a new position, Bears. We want you to be the general secretary of the Council of Churches here in South Africa. I was at that time serving as the Council of Churches general secretary in the United States. And the Council of Churches in the United States was heavily supporting Bears in the role that he was playing. He walked into the office, and on the first day that he came there, he announced to his board that he would be the general secretary of the Council of Churches of South Africa, a council dedicated to the end of apartheid. But he would only keep that position until there was an African that could take his place. That African was Desmond Tutu who came to be then the General Secretary of the Council of Churches in South Africa. Bayers Nade never gave up his connection to the Bruder Bond. Throughout all the years and from all the punishment that he took from the government, he maintained his ties and he maintained the friendship of many of the white South Africans. And when the time came, and if you know Bears, you know the end of this story. When the time came for there to be a change in the government, when it was time for Mandela to take over the government, it was none other than Bears Nade that was the one who negotiated between de Klerk and Mandela. And it was Bears Nade who was there in the moment when de Klerk gave up his presidency without a fight, without any kind of warlike character to the change of position. A miracle that I think that we in our time have really forgotten the power and the meaning of that transfer of power from Bears to Bayer from the head of the Council of South Africa, interjecting himself into a situation in which he was able to negotiate a change of power and for Mandela to become the president of South Africa. When the change came and Mandela stood before all the people of South Africa, he only gave credit to one person, and the credit he gave was to Bayer's Nade for his courage, for his suffering, for his willingness to take what he knew and change his mind, to make of his knowledge something that was so affected by an incident that happened to him that everything changed. And so was the knowing all. In many ways, it was the actions that were part of his life that did not only change him, but they changed the whole of the government of South Africa. And they gave to thousands of people the opportunity for freedom. His life for me, is one of the most inspiring of all of the stories of all of the people that I have been privileged to work with and to know. And Nelson Mandela, when Bears died, was there to say the words of thanksgiving at his time of his funeral. It is, in fact, I think, my friends, a great story for the end of this great conference. It is the power of love 
to bring about change. And it is a story of a brave and courageous man who was willing to risk it all for truth and for decency and for love and for honor. And I think as we take our depart from this place on this day, and we give thanks for International Baccalaureate and for the way in which you teach students, because at the heart of it, as a teacher myself, at the heart of all teaching is really to say, it is how we act on what we know that makes of us a citizen of the world, a world in which we would want for all of our children to come to know and to be themselves loving and caring human beings. Thank you.